well. We'll talk a little bit more about how to do that. Uh, welcome everybody, my name is Sharif Zakut. I'm a member of the Arab Resource and Organizing Center, and really today we are here because we are outraged that the mayor of all people is going on this propaganda trip to Israel. Not only is it horrible that he's going, but he's going at a time where only three days after the murder of Shirin Abu Akhle. So it's just pure ignorance on his part in going on this trip. Um, it's, it's completely tone deaf, and at the same time we are seeing that, the, that he is literally celebrating with our occupiers, and this is not tolerable, this is not something that we allow here in the Bay Area, especially in Berkeley, with its history of anti-apartheid movements. Down, right. down, down! Yeah. Yeah. So to begin, I would like to kick us off with Gus Newport, the former mayor, uh, Berkeley mayor, in addition to passing a re resolution to divest from South Africa, passed the first sanctuary city resolution that was passed in cities across the US and has relied on today's sanctuary movement and a true advocate for the people. Please give it up for Gus Newport. Good afternoon. I want to thank JVP for calling together this press conference and this meeting before the city council. I just cannot believe that a mayor of Berkeley, California, took it upon himself under these circumstances at this time to go to Israel, one of the most apartheid places in the world that exists today. And it's unbelievable because, you know, going back, they say we were the first city to divest from apartheid South Africa. But we put an initiative on the ballot when I was mayor that if it passed, I would write a letter to the President and Secretary of State of the U.S. and stop sending any monies to Israel that went towards developing buildings in the settlement. After that, Barbara Lubin, who just walked in, Woo! went to Israel-Palestine to look and see what was happening. When she came back, I can't tell you the words, the names she called me. Why didn't I tell her about the, what the real conditions were? But that's when we started Middle East Children's Alliance. And that was because to get to help the people of Palestine and such or whatever else. But it's sickening that a mayor of Berkeley Jesse Aragon, somebody who Bernie Sanders and I endorsed the first time he ran. I didn't endorse him the second time. But, but that we would think that he would do something like this under these circumstances. It's just not about Berkeley. And in the old days, when I was in office, we'd have had a, a, a petition out to recall his dear, sorry ass right now. <laughs> and if y'all don't try to get rid of him, <laughs> that's what happens. That's what activism is all about. There's no reason in the world that we should accept this kind of thing, especially after the sister was assassinated no. by the Israeli police, and they even tried to force the people carrying her coffin oh, to drop it disgusting. during the food, et cetera, whatever else. So let's do it all we can. This is just the beginning. Yeah. This Thank crowd you. has got to grow. Yeah. We've got to gather numbers. We've got to get rid of Jesse Argonne. Ain't no way you can talk to him. I don't care what you say. And let's do what we got to do. All power to the people. All power to the people. It's a real shame when we have a progressive, so-called progressive mayor who would really choose to actually uplift apartheid, especially in this moment. I want to say that these are different organizations here in the Bay Area that are sponsoring these trips, not only for Mayor Arguin, but also different supervisors in San Francisco and all over the Bay Area. So really, we should be holding all of these different so-called progressive politicians accountable. Next up, I would like to introduce uh, Ziad Abbas and Barbara Lubin uh, from the Middle East Children's Alliance. Um, so, uh, Ziad is uh, the founder of the Mecca Supported in the Cultural Center, born and raised in the Haitia refugee camp and uprooted from villages in 1948. He worked many years as a journalist in Palestine and would like Palestinian journalists, he uh, and like many Palestinian journalists, he was also tortured and harassed by the Israeli occupation forces. So please welcome Ziad Abbas. Thank you. Hi everyone, Masal Khair and Bihko Arabi. Thank you so much for coming today. My name is Ziad Abbas. I was born and grew up in a refugee camp. I am not the founder of Mecca. She is the founder. And you can take her to prison, not me. <laughs> so uh, I'm working in Mecca, and um, 
It's, it's really unbelievable. I moved here to the United States for uh, 2000 and 2008, and I'm working here, and I feel Berkeley to the backyard. I know when I used to receive delegations in Palestine while I'm working in the camp, where we hear about Berkeley, one of the major cities in the struggle against the apartheid system in South Africa. And all the time in the back of our head, Berkeley, it's a very progressive place. And people sometimes from Berkeley, they speak very proudly about this history and this legacy. And here we are, in front of people, they, they made this history for, for Berkeley. Unfortunately, we have a new mayor right now destroying this history. And in the state to take a stand. Jesse, recall Jesse! Shame, shame, shame! Recall Jesse! In the state to continue the work the other they started in the 80s, he's doing the opposite. He signed up with the apartheid system, supporting the apartheid system. And just a few days ago, he was traveling around. And just I want to remind the mayor, wherever you have been, in every restaurant you ate, in every hotel you slept, in every place you had a meeting, it's the place of our home, our families, our people, the roots, it's there. And if you continue to deny that, deny our right there, we will deny your right to be in this municipality in Berkeley. <laughs> Absolutely, it's something disturbing when you have a mayor go visit Israel and just let remind you, JCRC organized this kind of trip, especially in May, to celebrate the independent day of Israel, which it is the catastrophe for the Palestinians. At the same time, three days after they assassinated Shirin Abu Akhla. And just I want to say, like, uh, for me, as I was working in Palestine as a journalist, we have 55 Palestinian journalists. They were assassinated since 2000 until now. Mm -hmm. And in this moment, we have 16 journalists. They are already in Israeli jails for the work they do for the Palestinians. Simply, with Berkeley history, the mayor should take a stand for supporting these, uh, uh, the, the Palestinian people in general and support the journalists. Instead, he goes and celebrates with Israel. This is our work. This is the beginning, as Gussie said. We want to hold these politicians accountable for what they are doing. And we should not ever stop this, because this is the way how it will work. Our work should start from the streets. This is how the uh, boycott against the apartheid system in South Africa, in the streets, in the churches, in the universities, everywhere and to hold the local people accountable so later we can hold the politician in the high level accountable for their uh, 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 their actions and for me just i want to say if jesse continue to ignore that and deny this he should look to the history and maybe i know maybe it's my colleague later they will speak jesse and jcrc right now they have this kind of tactic when they try to meet with some of the Palestinian authority, not Palestinian people. Right. I'll not say that much about that. I want to go back to visit Palestine, but I'm sure some <laughs> other people don't talk about it. <laughs> but the idea for us Palestinians, this kind of action doesn't clean up for you. Mm -hmm. The game is to, hey, we are balanced. No, you are not balanced. This is a colonial system. Mm -hmm. Israel is a colonial settler. Apartheid system, and he continued to deny all the reports coming from all the human rights uh, uh, organization. Amnesty report came in February 1st. A human rights watch report. Even if he doesn't believe in amnesty or human rights watch, at least Jesse should look to the Israeli human rights, like Beit Salem, where they spoke about the apartheid system in Israel and how Israel as an occupation is apartheid system. Our friends, this is the beginning, and we want to continue to do this work. And Jesse should come out and denounce this visit and acknowledge the rights of the indigenous people here in Berkeley and the rights of the indigenous people in Palestine. This is what we are looking, and this is the, the beginning, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate you uplifting also that this was
around the time of the 74th year of our occupation, the Nakba, an ongoing uh, resistance and struggle against Israeli colonial apartheid. And so, of course, we want to uplift our resistance, our people's roots, uh, from here in Berkeley, Turtle Island, to Palestine. I'd like to remind folks that we would like to sign up for public comment as soon as we get inside and they open up. And there is also virtual sign-in. Uh, next up, I'd like to introduce Cheryl Davila, former city council member, anti-Zionist, and champion of the people. Cheryl, thank you so much. <laughs> for being here. This was my council district, District 2. And welcome to Ohlone Territory. Mayor, how dare you? How dare you go to an apartheid Israel? How dare you? How dare your office simply state you were out of the country without full transparency of your destination? Of course no one is surprised. How dare you go to apartheid Israel days after Israeli forces killed Shari Abu Akla, an American Palestinian journalist. Say her name. Shari Abu Akla. Shari Abu Akla. Shari Abu Akla. How dare you condone her killing by supporting Israel apartheid? How dare you, Jesse? Sadly, you have given us years worth of documented, egregious decisions that you have made. We are not surprised that you yet again have given us another reason to distrust and have no confidence in the mayor's office in the city of Berkeley, which you serve. Remember, you are accountable. You work for us. You have an obligation to your constituency you cannot be governed by entities that are racist. It has become very clear that other forces are involved in ruling this city. Yes. The betrayal of your trust, of our trust, appears to be controlled by Zionists. Zionism is racism, Jesse. The city of Berkeley has no has demonstrated Zionist control, in my experience, as a commissioner and as a council member, numerous times. The evidence demonstrates an appearance of Zionist control dominant in the city of Berkeley. Zionist control was demonstrated when I got removed from the Human Welfare and Community Action Commission. The rage and dismissive behavior of the city staff, Chris Worthington, Christine Lee, and many others in 2015. Zionist control was demonstrated, you may recall, my standby officer, who was Palestinian, once his fingerprints cleared, suddenly there was a problem. Suddenly, it took over a year to approve my standby officer. He changed the rules to, to of standby officers. Zionist control was demonstrated again when I started to adjourn council meetings in honor of Palestinians that were killed in the Great March, the Great Right to Return March, and other times they were killed under the occupation. All of a sudden, the rules changed. But I didn't let that stop me. I would adjourn the memory in memory anyway. Zionist control was demonstrated again when I put forth an item, racism is a public health crisis and a safety issue in the city of Berkeley, with definitions of all the forms of racism. Of course, the council passed the item, but first they had to take out all the definitions because Zionism was part of that. How can we, how can Berkeley be a sanctuary city if you support apartheid. If you support racism, Jesse, if you support settler colonialism, why didn't you take advantage of the opportunities given for your egregious travel destination? You were given a chance to, you were given a chance to, but 
the end. Um, wait, you were given a chance, but you allowed yourself to be in collusion with corruption that we all know exists. The behaviors demonstrate that you are in agreement with confiscation, demolition of Palestinian homes, and killings of Palestinians by Israel soldiers, Israeli soldiers. We have seen the behavior right here in Berkeley with our unhoused community, with their confiscation and belongings being taken. Mm -hmm. Traveling to apartheid Israel reflects you are who you really are. You agree with propaganda of Zionism. Jesse, you work for us regardless if we voted for you or not. You, Jesse Ara Green, work for the people living in Berkeley, not the Zionists, not the special interests, not the police association, but us, the people of Berkeley, housed or unhoused. <laughs> the Palestinian residents of Berkeley, the black and brown residents of Berkeley, and the people of color, as well as our pink allies of Berkeley. You work for all of us. How can anyone feel safe knowing you support apartheid? You support expulsion, gentrification, and displacement, and you support murder. Yes. <coughs> Jesse, from 45, the former reality show host, you're fired, Jesse Zionism is a, cult, is a political ideology that enforces white supremacy and settler colonialism. We're going to keep it going now. Next up, I'd like to introduce Hatem Bazian, lecturer at UC Berkeley, adjunct faculty at Zaytuna University, and longtime Berkeley resident. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see all of you in here. Uh, I actually saw first on Twitter that Jesse and a whole bunch of Bay Area progressives uh, visiting and uh, touring uh, Palestine, but touring Israel in a trip that is sponsored by JCRC, Jewish Community Relations Council. And one of the tweets said uh, the flip side uh, uh, of, of Israel and Good Friday and celebrating, uh, in essence, being in there. And the question that I raised, the flip side of what? Because that Friday was the funeral uh, of Shirin Abu Akleh, where the Israeli stormtroopers, that's what they are, stormtroopers, uh, attacked uh, the coffin uh, and beating individuals that were carrying the coffin in Jerusalem. So it's obviously that those who were putting this tweet, the flip side, basically they wanted to be part of the cleanup crew for Israeli crime. And that's what it was. It was a cleanup job to try to say that there is another side uh, of Israel that we need to see. But it is the side that is, in essence, completely cleansed of Palestinians. Uh, completely cleansed of taking responsi responsibility and accountability. And I also remembered that during the anti-apartheid movement, which Gus, uh, Barbara, and many of us that were active during this period, 
that the South African government was engaged in a similar type of campaign. They used to call it constructive engagement. They used to invite political uh, leadership in here. They used to appeal to student leaders to come and visit South Africa to show them that you know there are nice things in South Africa, including Sun City, which became a focal point for those who want to go and uh, to engage culturally with South Africa, and that actually energized for us to do the cultural boycott. So let's say to Jesse and those progressives in the Bay Area that are practicing PEP progressives except on Palestine, that your trip is the Sun City trip of South Africa, that you are actually engaged in the similar type of campaign. The second thing, and this is you're going to hear from Jesse, you're going to hear from, from some of the politicians across the Bay in San Francisco and others, they're going to say the following, oh, we met with Palestinians. Right? Yeah. Jesse is going to actually have some photographs right, where we have met with Palestinians. And some of them might be wearing the kufiya in here as a way. They might actually have a photograph with actually eating kunafe as a way of cultural what we call <laughs> sensitivity. But let's be very clear. During the apartheid period, those who were visiting, visiting South Africa used to meet with black South Africans Chief Botolesi of South Africa and his hand-picked supporters of apartheid at the time. So Jesse, you met with hand-picked Palestinian Authority personnel, our own Botolesi in the West Bank that are trained, funded, managed by both the United States, Israel, and the region. So that is a fig leaf that is attempting to cover Jesse you are the emperor that has no clothes, and all of us can actually see this exactly as it is. So if they pull up this that we met with Palestinians, said the Palestinian Authority is part of the colonial structure, providing the security system to secure the settlers and the Israeli apartheid system. Third, and I don't know whether he reads or not. Again, I'm assuming that in Berkeley you should read. There was a report from Human Rights Watch determining that Israel is an apartheid state. If you didn't read it, I'll send you a copy. Second, there was Amnesty International report that determined that Israel is an apartheid state. There was actually a bet Salem. Again, if you have a problem with looking at human rights organizations that are part of the US, here's an Israeli human rights organization that says that we are having an apartheid state. If you want a much larger international frame, the United Nations Human Rights Committee actually put out the report that Israel is an apartheid state. So let's pose the question to Jesse and the rest of the Bay Area politicians, what kind of progressive you are if you're visiting a country that has already been determined by all of the human rights organizations as an apartheid state. You can't have your progressiveness and eat apartheid on the side. That's what took place. Lastly, if you visited Palestine and you visited the place where you say you're engaging in peace, because again, they say we're trying to get the two-state solution. If you did not stop at a checkpoint, you have not visited Palestine. If you did not go to a refugee camp, you have not visited Palestine. If you did not go to Sheikh Jarrah, you did not visit Palestine. If you did not visit a Naqab uh, Bedouins that their houses have been demolished, you have not visited Palestine. And for sure, if you did not stop to offer condolences to Shireen Abu Akhle's family, then you are part of the cleanup crew that covered up the assassination of an American Palestinian journalist, and therefore you have not visited, nor you could cover her. So, for us, we need the following. We need to recall Jesse. Yes. And the second, any one of you and anyone that you know, you need to run for the city council yeah. and run for the mayor. Yeah. That is the way that we need to change the politics in this city and to change the politics. JCRC can take these on a VIP tour. We will take the city council and the local political 
uh, see it in order to reflect our progressive priorities. If Israel is demolishing homes, these political VIPs are demolishing the homeless encampments and thinking right. that is progressive. So we need to make a connection between what is taking place locally and what the VIP tours that are taking place. So, all what I see in front of me is people who are qualified. So if you're qualified, fill your papers and run while we're actually trying to recall Jesse. So recall Jesse, recall Jesse, recall Jesse. Recall Jesse, recall Jesse, recall Jesse. We should not accept progressives except on Palestine. That is done with, it's over. Uh, I would like to say that if folks would like to write uh, write in their names for public comment, you can go over here to Sarah, um, and she'll provide you with those comment cards. Um, next up, we're going to keep it going. Next up, I'd like to introduce Barbara Lubin, founder of the Middle East Children's Alliance, right here in Berkeley. Yeah. beginning we're really fucked <laughs> because this is my 35th year and I have to say you know I, I've been out of it for quite a while but you're all gonna have to work a lot harder to get people to come to events like this one because I commend all of you for coming but I'm shocked that it's not ten times larger. Maybe they're inside. They're outside. Yeah, maybe there are other people, but it's going to take more than this handful and whoever else comes to make a difference. I mean, how many years do we listen to this stuff? So it's not new. Um, I believe Barbara Lee was on that delegation. I believe, well, they all go. This has been going on since the beginning of time. All across this nation, sheriffs, city council members, mayors have all been taken to the West Bank, to Israel, to see for themselves the glory of Israel. And it's not just here, it's all over. And you, got, you guys got to get to work. Thank you. Bay Area residents, we have a lot of work ahead of us, but we also have a lot of resistance that we should be proud of. Yes. We've already heard about fighting South African apartheid here in Berkeley. Oakland became the first city in the world that still to this day does not accept Israeli ships coming into the port of Oakland. And last year, our NECVA rally had over 10,000 people show up in San Francisco. So we have a lot of work ahead of us, but we are also a growing movement, and we will continue to fight until Palestine is free, yes. and until we acknowledge and recognize all of the harm that these settler colonial systems have done to all of our people here on Turtle Island, to Palestine, and all over the world. Ooh. Next up, I would like to introduce uh, Violette, Ooh, who's yes. a member of the Palestinian Youth Movement. I'm here with the Palestinian Youth Movement, and I'm here because I'm angry. I'm angry about Shirin Abu Akhla's assassination in cold blood. I'm angry about our people mourning her and being beaten and attacked at her funeral. I'm angry that Israel refuses to investigate her murder. That's no surprise, but I'm still angry. And I'm angry that about Tahir Maslat, Walid Sharif, Amjad Said, Rada Sabatin, and all the lives taken too early by the settler colonial regime of Israel. We are here because we are furious. Furious that the Berkeley city mayor and Berkeley progressives, so-called progressives, in the midst of a heightened attack on Palestinian life and dignity across all of Palestine, these so-called progressives 
and this may and the mayor is enjoying his time on our stolen land consuming the illegal occupiers propaganda Jesse's complete disregard of Palestinian life is unacceptable especially for a city like Berkeley that boasts of its progressive values Jesse is disrespecting the history of Berkeley's local government by being on this trip during the 1980s Gus Newport signed a resolution backing the divestment of apartheid South Africa as Berkeley mayor. This was the first city in the US to do so, as people have said. This mayor, Mayor Jesse, claims on his official website that the battles of, against apartheid in South Africa have shaped his lifelong commitment to fighting for social justice. Where is this lifetime commitment now when Palestinians are being attacked, murdered, made homeless in their own land and the widespread bare minimum, it's the bare minimum y'all, the bare minimum call for solidarity is boycott divest sanctions. Where is this lifetime commitment when Jesse is on occupied Palestinian land, is on a nine day vacation dancing until his feet hurt? These propaganda trips funnel money in the government that is murdering Palestinians, building settlements and military zones over villages like right now in Masaf Riyatta, kicking families out of their homes in Sheikh Jarrah in Naqab, demolishing school buildings in Al-Malih, bombing Gaza, and committing countless atrocities against the Palestinian people. But these trips are not just about money. They are about normalizing the violence of the Zionist regime that has been desecrating our land and ethnically cleansing us out of it for over 74 years. And this is not the first time that Jesse has stood on the wrong side of history and the wrong side of justice. The rapid displacement of residents of People's Park, along with the removal of 1921 Walnut Street, one of the few remaining rent-controlled buildings in Berkeley, both happened under Jesse's tenure as Berkeley mayor. Shame on Jesse! And during the fight to save the West Berkeley Shell Mound, he pitted the Ohlone people against affordable $4,000 a month housing, pushing for the desecration of a sacred burial site. A city with a rich history of standing up against oppression and violence deserves better than a mayor that does little to assist the black and brown and Palestinian members of this community. The city of Berkeley has devolved from the progressive values of Cus Newport and his principal stance against apartheid in the 1980s to our current mayor using our tax dollars to normalize the harsh brutality of a settler colonial apartheid state. Jesse is guilty of peddling the progressive label while refusing to take principled stances on matters like Palestine. What he's saying by being on this trip is that Palestinian lives are but a minor inconvenience. Our calls for solidarity to boycott, divest, and sanction as Israel is actively ethnic ethnically cleansing us is insignificant. And that's why I'm calling on all of us to continue to show up, to continue to fight on all fronts for Palestinian freedom and Palestinian liberation, justice, and dignity. Thank you, V. Um, I'd like to remind folks, if you sign cards to speak, uh, the meeting is starting, so we'd like to encourage folks who are planning to speak to start going inside. We have a few more speakers, um, so I'm going to keep it going. Next up, we have Mulal al co-founder of the U.S. Palestinian Community Network and labor organizer. Mulal yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm here in presenting U.S. Palestinian Community Network on May 11th, one of our sisters, Shireen Abu Akli, was shot, was shot in the head by the occupied forces. Next day, Jesse leaves for a propaganda trip to the apartheid state of Israel. The apartheid police thugs denied Shireen a dignified mourner procession, carrying Shireen's casket identical to what happened to Sister Ashley Ariel in South Africa, a leader of the African National Congress in, in South Africa in 1987. Same tactics, same funders, same allies. Same thing happened now. That was happened, uh, and it, it started a current wave to get rid of the apartheid regime. And I am extremely honored and proud 
to be standing next to the legend of one of the founders, one of the pioneers of starting the anti-apartheid movement, and not only in Berkeley, but Berkeley started that in all over the United States and all over the world. The current mayor of Berkeley wants to turn the clock backwards. Are we gonna let him do that? No! Are we gonna let him do that? No! Okay, for the Palestinians in America, for Palestinians in Palestine, for Palestinians around the world, we join our voices to people of Berkeley who are outraged at this total disrespect traveling to occupied Palestine on the 74th anniversary of the Nakba. 74th anniversary of the Nakba where 15,000 people were killed, where 500 towns and villages were destroyed, where 800,000 Palestinians were, were forced out of their homes, including my grandparents in Bir Sabah and in Naqa. For those indigenous people, for Jesse and his funders, they think this propaganda, this property of a land, for propaganda of land without a people, for a people without a land. 74 years later, this lie can no longer work. 74 years later, we want to reassert our narrative as Palestinians. 74 years later, we call upon the people of Berkeley. We, we are with you, hand to hand, shoulder to shoulder, to reclaim our people, our, our, the voice of, the, of Berkeley. People where, where the government, by the people, for the people, when Brother Gus and other leaders were leaders of this town. We want to claim, claim, reclaim the voice of Berkeley. The flagship we used to, and around, and around the country, around the world, Palestinians used to look at Berkeley as the flagship of anti-apartheid movement. But uh, as the flagship of, of, of uh, progressive movement against racism, against uh, slavery, against all injustice. Uh, uh, now, the, the, not a captive of the funders of apartheid Israel as the, current, uh, uh, as the current mayor of Berkeley is. Lastly, to just and his, uh, and to him I say, we live in a different world, we live in a different time. I understand, I understand, I truly understand what Barbara was saying, that this is not new. But this is a new beginning. It's not the beginning, but this is a new beginning. It's time to make the wave turn back. Okay? We live in a different time when censorship and criticize the state of Israel is no longer should be the case. With the taboo of untouchable regime of occupied under the claim of anti-Semitic is no longer valid. Claiming to be progressive without standing with the justice of Palestine is no longer valid. You can no longer claim to be progressive and not be with uh, supporting justice in Palestine. That's a, yes. a message yes. to DC and to all politicians in Berkeley, in California, and throughout the states of, of America. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Malala. Uh, as we know, our oppressors work together across boundaries, so our solidarity, too, must know no boundaries. I'd like to next up introduce Ellen Brodsky with uh, Jewish Voice for Peace and longtime Berkeley resident. Ellen. Yeah. Yeah. Hi everybody, I'm gonna keep it short because we have had so many powerful, eloquent speakers that have talked to you about why Jesse shouldn't have gone to Israel, what's happening there. I'm Ellen Brodsky, I'm a Jewish resident of Berkeley for 34 years. My husband, who's inside doing public comment, we were lucky to have raised our kids in a progressive city at that time that was one of the first to pass a divestment resolution against South Africa, South African apartheid, a city whose schools taught ethnic studies before there was a state mandate, and a city whose residents have stood in solidarity with the indigenous Ohlone people of this land to restore the Berkeley Shell Mound. I'm also a member of the Bay Area chapter of Jewish Voice for Peace, an organization which provides a political home for the rapidly growing number of US Jews who demand an end to US military and political support for an apartheid state of Israel and who support the Palestinian people in their 74 year long struggle for freedom, justice and equality in their indigenous land. And I know I speak for so many Berkeley residents 
when I say that I am outraged and pissed off and won't accept Mayor Aragin's propaganda junket to apartheid Israel. Um, we have, in just the last few days, just like three days, we have circulated a petition that has already gathered close to 300 signatures. Um, and we are gonna keep circulating it. So pass it to your friends. This is not over, as people have been saying. This is not over. And I suggest that Mayor, Mayor Aragin pay close attention to the comments that Berkeley residents have submitted in that petition and to the emails he has been receiving so that he understands exactly why we, as progressive Berkeley residents, condemn him going on this trip. And the last thing I wanna do is just read, I'm not gonna read the whole petition, I just wanna read the demands that people signed on to in the petition. The first is that Berkeley Mayor's Office and City Council publicly denounce the Israeli government for the assassination of Palestinian American journalist Shireen Abu Akhla, attacks on her funeral by Israeli police, and call for an international investigation into her killing. Jesse and the City Council need to do this. The mayor provides documentation to the public that this trip was not taken as part of your salaried hours paid for by Berkeley resident tax dollars because we don't accept that. Mm -hmm. And finally, the mayor meet with Palestinian residents of Berkeley and the Bay Area to apologize and to learn about and honor their lived experiences and that of their families in historic Palestine. Thank you to everyone who came here today. Um, we are going to continue to uh, expose politicians like Mayor Araguin and all politicians who choose to align themselves with apartheid and colonialism. I'm going to pass it off to Sarah Kirshner, who is a longtime Berkeley resident and member of the International Jewish Anti-Zionist Network, to close us out. And then we would like to take a group picture with all the speakers and then show our political force and power and head inside. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Sarah. Rico Jesse! Rico Jesse! Rico Jesse! Rico Jesse! Rico Jesse! Rico Jesse! So thank you all for coming out. It never matters what our numbers are. We are on the right side, and there are so many more people with us yeah. than are able yeah. to be here today. Yeah. We are the majority. The majority yeah. of people believe that journalists' job is to lift up the voices and experiences of the people and the people who have the least amount of coverage by the media. And Shireen was doing that and was assassinated. And Jesse going to Palestine is a way of condoning that violence. So the hypocrisy of Jesse tonight saying that he is closing this meeting in honor of the murder and shooting of people in Texas while he goes to Palestine three days after the assassination of a journalist by a gun. Make up your mind. You either stand against the mass shooting of people or you stand with it and condone it. You either stand against the white nationalism and the kind of violence that happened in Buffalo, or you condone it and you allow it. And Jesse has made it clear that we cannot count on him. We cannot count on Jesse to stand against white nationalism and to stand for the rights of people to be safe, to have dignity, and to have self-determination. So with that, we want to encourage you to write to Jesse, write to city council, let them know how you feel. Right now, if you're able to, when you go home, make dinner, whatever you're gonna get into, turn on Berkeley City Council and speak at public, um, public comment later on. People are speaking inside right now. If you can wait two minutes and we can go inside and just line up and have a presence in the back, Great, we don't need to stay. If the speakers are able to come up, Max, who's a freelance journalist, 
is going to take a picture, yeah? yeah? Okay. So, um, who's, he's, he's working on something for the Oakland Post. Great. Thank you for being here. Woo! And continue from here. Free, free Palestine. 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 Yeah, we're going to go around. Okay, are you all ready? Yeah, thanks a lot. I'm going to